Kyle Larson will eventually get a chance on a Formula One car. The Xfinity Series is on the CW. Plus, let's talk about who's going into the number seven car. Welcome back to Break Hard, I'm Matt. Don't share much about my personal life on here, but I did get to take my dog to the Bark at the Park last night at Great American Ballpark in Cincinnati. Phenomenal time. If you have, if you have a dog, you want to take them to one, highly recommend it, especially if they like other dogs. If they don't, probably not the place for them, but all around great event. Plus, I got to see an old Gen 6 friend sitting there in the concourse because, of course, next year, the Reds and the Braves are playing at Bristol Motor Speedway in the Speedway Classic. Tickets are already secured for that, so I will see hopefully some of you down there next August for that event. But getting into today's news, uh, Zach Brown was on Kevin Harvick's podcast this week. And Kevin asked him kind of, I think what a lot of people want to know is, will we ever see Kyle Larson in a Formula One car? Of course, there's been all this conversation about who's the greatest driver in the world between Max Verstappen and Kyle Larson. Um, ironically, since that conversation has been going on, both of them have been absolutely abysmal for the most part. So <laughs> probably not the best time to have brought that up for either driver at this point. But Harvick asked Zach Brown, hey, what are the chances we're going to see Kyle Larson in a Formula One car? And Zach said that eventually down the road, their plan is to get Kyle Larson into an F1 car. I would put the full clip on here, but Fox is going to come after me for copyright, so I'm just not going to do that. And instead, just give you the gist of it, where Zach said that they would love to get Kyle into a Formula One car. That is their plan. Of course, Kyle Larson only has 29 super license points, and the uh, road courses that NASCAR series races on are not FIA homologated uh, circuits, so that also nullifies his chance of getting a super license, because you need 40 in general. He only has 29, plus they're not going to certify those license points because they don't race on homologated circuits. So he's not getting a super license. We will not see him, unfortunately, in an FP1, so we can see where he stacks up against other drivers. That would be absolutely wild if it happened. It will not. Instead, our best chance is to see Kyle Larson uh, drive around in a test, an old McLaren F1 car, probably two, three years old at this point. Remember when Fernando Alonso and Jimmy Johnson did that ride swap? Um at Bahrain when Fernando hopped into a 48 Gen 6 cup car and um, Jimmy hopped into an old McLaren. I believe it was still the V8 model back then. So pre-hybrid, so 2013, I believe is the year uh, car that he hopped into. Either way, still a cool crossover event. Kyle Larson getting into a car would be really fun to see. It's not going to be comparable to basically anything that anyone else has done, especially because some of the older McLarens from the last couple of years were dog food, uh, to put it you know nicely. If he could get into this year's car, that would be absolutely phenomenal, but it probably will not happen, at least not for a couple years. Maybe he could hop into this year's car a few years down the road from now. But Kyle Larson eventually getting into an F1 car would be very fun. Now we just need to get Max Verstappen into a NASCAR Cup car and just do a ride swap like that. It would be fun to see, uh, you know, Hendrick and McLaren team up again and take, uh, you know, the five car over and let Oscar Piastri or Orlando Norris drive it around whatever circuit, maybe even Bahrain, because of course McLaren is owned by the Bahrain. Rainy royal family. Uh, so that would be an interesting crossover as well. We're not going to get to see him in a official practice, but we still will eventually get to see Kyle Larson in a Formula One car. And before we move on, remember that there is now a Break Hard blog. Link is in the description below. Trying to post a, you know, a weekend preview as well as a recap and probably something during the week. And also remember, head over to drivensunglasses.com today. Use code BREAKHARD at checkout for 20% off plus free shipping. All right, pay attention. Stop scrolling on your phone. Look up at the television screen. Listen to what I am saying. The NASCAR Xfinity Series is on the CW this Friday night. It is not on USA. It is not on NBC. It will be on DCW until the end of the season. The CW, famous for those random DC shows, Vampire Diaries, maybe Gilmore Girl reruns. I'm not sure entirely what is actually on the CW other than Tom Brenneman talking about random obscure ACC football games. And I think also Live Tour is on the CW as well. But now the Xfinity series will be on the CW live on Friday night. It will not be on NBC or USA. Here's the thing. You all get the CW. Everybody in the country gets the CW. It's like water. If you have a house, you have an apartment, you have service, you're going to get the CW. If you don't even have a cable subscription, guess what? You can get the CW. You just need to buy a digital antenna. And if you don't have one, you can go get one at Walmart or Amazon or whatever. They're under $20. So if you have a cable subscription, you get the CW. If you have YouTube TV, you get the CW. Hulu TV, the CW. I'm not sure about Fubo. If you have Fubo, why are you buying that? It's like people that bought the Zoom instead of the iPod. Dumb. Should have just gone with what everybody else is doing here. But I assume you probably get the CW as well. Even if you don't have cable, you get the CW if you have a digital antenna. Now, 
Here's the thing that I know is going to make some people probably upset because people like to be upset about anything and everything on the internet. You will not be able to stream the final eight races of the Xfinity Series season on the CW app or on the NBC Sports app. Now, I know that might annoy some people here, but if you have a streaming through your cable provider, you know, like Spectrum has their own streaming app, Comcast, their own streaming app, that type of thing, you'll be able to watch it there. YouTube TV, Hulu, you know, whatever else, those other streaming services, you'll also be able to watch it there, just not natively through the CW app or the NBC Sports app. Now, you're probably wondering, why do you keep talking about NBC Sports when it's the CW? That's because... The CW is basically just taking the NBC broadcast and putting it onto the CW. I still have Rick Allen, Steve Letarte, Jeff Burton on the call, uh, still using all of their stuff. Heck, even the practice and qualifying session for the Xfinity Series is on USA. Just the races will be on the CW before transitioning full-time to the CW in 2025. So do not forget, Friday night, the CW, not USA, not NBC. We've all been sitting around waiting to find out who would get in the number seven car over at Spire Motorsports. Is it going to be Justin Haley? Is it going to be Alex Bowman? Is it going to be somebody else? Well, it will be Justin Haley in 2025 that will take over that number seven seat at Spire Motorsports, replacing Corey LaJoy, who has had a tumultuous season. Uh, up to this point and certainly did not make any more friends this last week at Watkins Glen. And now Corey has been strongly rumored to be headed over to the uh, 51 car at Rick Ware Racing, essentially just doing a ride swap here. Could we see that happen sooner than the end of 2024? Uh, I guess anything is possible at this point. But for now, Justin Haley expected to be in that seven car full time in 2025, returning home. Siri, play that Skylar Gray, I'm coming home song because he's going back to the team where he won his first NASCAR Cup Series race at Daytona 2019 in the summer race. The only win for Spire at this point. Corey LaJoy doesn't consider it a real win. I understand why he says that. I understand why people get upset about that, but it was a Spire victory, Spire victory um, at that point. So it does count towards them. I get it. That wasn't what Spire is today. But for Justin Haley, he has some big time believers in the Cup Series. Have heard that there's a lot of people at Hendrick that are high on him. Hendrick and Spire, of course, have a technical uh, alliance and would expect that to continue on into 2025, if not get a little bit stronger even at that. So Justin Haley going over to Spire, the team that he you know started in the Cup Series with, and now will carry on. He's going to get Rodney Childers as his crew chief. He's going to get a very stout number seven team. He has Carson Hosvar as a teammate. He'll have Michael McDowell as a teammate next year as well. In terms of mid-pack teams, which is what Spire is at the moment, even though they're coming off their first ever triple top 10 at Watkins Glen, where all three cars were in the top 10, um, they're still a team that is very much in the midfield, right? They don't have a uh, win on speed yet, right? They haven't brought race winning level of speed to the racetrack yet. At times, they have definitely shown the capability to be in position. Corey LaJoy in Atlanta, um, even Carson Hosvar this past weekend has a third place finish at at um, Watkins Glen. They have race winning speed, just not regularly. And we even saw Zane Smith earlier this year at Nashville, which of course did take, you know, a number of overtimes for that to, uh, you know, play and have him in position to potentially win that race. Now expecting 2025 for them to take another step up, expect them to be the best of those midfield teams, if you will, behind Hendrick Gibbs and probably Penske at that point, maybe put them like on an RFK level track house level. They're going to be more competitive than they are this year. And for Justin Haley, Yes, a lot of people are going to say that Brad Keselowski was high on Justin Haley. That's why, you know, Justin went over to Rick Ware because they have a strong relationship with RFK. Completely understand all of that. But if there's no openings for him at RFK and Kroger wanted Ryan Priest for that third car, which that really didn't even develop um, until after all of these rumors and things started to carry on, then, of course, he's probably going to look elsewhere. Rick Ware Racing, he's overachieved in that car, for sure. No doubts about that. But if Spire comes calling with Rodney Childers as a crew chief and, you know, the partnership that they have with Hendrick, that is certainly a route that you're going to take. So expect Justin Haley in that number seven car. There was, of course, a ton of rumors around whether or not Alex Bowman would get demoted out of that Hendrick seat down to the seven car at Spire uh, in 2025. It does not appear that that's going to happen. Justin Haley will instead be in that seven car and will not be going to the 48. That was a rumor that was out there. I know people were trashing the DBC guys. Again, they didn't say anything that hadn't been floating around for a month at that point. Let me know in the comments what you think about Larson eventually getting to drive an F1 car, the CW, and the Xfinity Series. Don't forget, Friday night on the CW, plus Justin Haley headed to the 7 car uh, next season. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Break Hard Blog.